Good morning, friends. Glad to be back with you. Uh, another week and uh, another week of just amazing things happening in this world that we live in. Uh, these are very momentous times. These are prophetic times. And uh, I, I know there's a lot of people in this world that are more of an expert than I am. But I believe that by looking at the Word of God and looking at the uh, things that are happening in the Middle East right now, uh, we can get some ideas of where we possibly could be in God's timetable and in possibly the rapture of the church, the coming seven-year tribulation period, the Battle of Armageddon, uh, uh, you know, and on the millennial reign, the uh, new heavens and new earth. Exciting things. Things are changing. I mean, things are changing so rapidly and so quickly. And so we have uh, we have already spent two uh, the last two uh, sessions, the last two Sundays, we've spent on the war in Israel and things that you will not hear on the news and. I want to continue in that today because there's some exciting things that we want to look at. And before I go any further, I want to ask the Lord to help us. Father, right now, I thank you. And Lord, only by your Spirit are we able to discern the times and understand your Word. We ask for the enablement of the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, in my heart and in the heart of every listener, every viewer, Lord, that we will uh, be able to, to see what's going on and ascertain the truth. For we're sure not getting it from anywhere else in the world today. And Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when I, said, <laughs> when I said that, I immediately thought I better qualify that. I said we're not getting it from anywhere else in the world. I'm talking about from the secular news. I'm not talking about there's lots of other great preachers. Uh, that are preaching the truth and understanding the times that we're living in. And so uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm just a small voice crying in the wilderness. I'm not the only voice that's crying in the wilderness. And so we're using as a basis for our study the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew. And I've said before, I, I told you when we started this, I've I got my old Bible out, and it's all beat up, it's all marked up, uh, taped together. It'd be falling apart if I hadn't put that tape on it. Oh, you tape, and they got beat yesterday. But you know what? I'm still blessed of the Lord. And so, uh, okay, so we're in the 24th chapter. I encourage you to get your Bible. The 24th chapter of Matthew is... Uh, really the most detailed uh, time that Jesus goes into a discussion of the end times. And so we're going to look at that. And I'm going to start at verse 1 just to catch this up real quick. Jesus went out and parted from the temple and his disciples came to him to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not these things, talking about the temple, Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. That was absolutely stunning to the disciples. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Now, they, that first part of that question, they asked three things. When shall these things be? When shall the stones all be thrown down? And, of course, we all know that happened in uh, 70 A.D. when Titus, the Roman army, uh, swarmed into Jerusalem and they tore every stone apart uh, to get the gold out between uh, from those great stones and fulfilled this prophecy exactly. That means everything else that Jesus says here is going to be fulfilled exactly. So they said, tell us, uh, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? So the last two parts, they're asking for signs. Uh, what's going to be the signs of 
your coming and the end of the world. And so that's what we're dealing with. And Jesus says, uh, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. And all of these, he says, are the beginning of sorrows. And so I believe uh, with all my heart, folks, the, we're seeing all that. We're seeing all those things. We're living uh, in the midst of all of those things. So according to what we see in the Word of God and what we're seeing around us, I don't think there's any doubt but what we're living in the beginning of sorrows. Now, if you if you mark your Bible up, uh, this this chapter 24 actually has several sections. One is the beginning of sorrows. Uh, the next part is the first three and a half years of the tribulation period. Uh, the la the next part is the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. Then when you get down to the end of this, you get to the Battle of Armageddon. And then chapter 25 goes into Jesus setting up the thousand-year millennial reign on the earth. And so this would be a good study for us to just go verse by verse through that one of these days. But uh, we're on a different subject. We're talking about what's going on in Israel. What is happening with this war? Is it a biblical prophetic event that's taking place? And we're talking about biblical prophetic things that you will never hear talked about or discussed on the news. As a matter of fact, I would say that if I was not such a small voice crying in the wilderness, if I had a much broader base and larger audience, I would say that a lot of what I teach and what I'm saying would be censored and removed, and I would be removed from uh, some of the... Uh, resources that are uh, carrying us. I appreciate them letting us be on, but I, uh, some of what I'm saying would not be something they probably would want uh, put out there. So, at some point in this, now he says all of these are the beginning of sorrows. This is the beginning of sorrows is prior to the beginning of the tribulation period. Now folks, the tribulation period is the final seven years. Now, I, I real quickly, and I know I don't want to get uh, into confusion where people are confused, but a lot of people might be saying, well, what, are you, what do you mean the final seven years? The final seven years uh, are, are, are the final, we call it the final seven years because it culminates in the battle of Armageddon and Jesus Christ coming back to land on this planet in person on the Mount of Olives. Folks, the Bible's full of that teaching. If you want to argue against it, you can find many chapter and verse that says that's going to happen and it is going to happen. He's coming back this time not as, the, not as the Lamb of God, but as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Bible in Revelation describes him and says on his thigh was the words King of kings and Lord of lords. His vesture was dipped in blood and he comes to fight the battle of Armageddon. Lands on the Mount of Olives, sets up a kingdom. So that's at the end of the final seven years. Now, you say, well, how will we know when the final seven years starts? Now, the final seven years, folks, is a prophecy given to the nation of Israel. That's why this thing that's happening in Israel right now is so important for us to try to understand what's happening because the final seven years are the final seven years of Jesus Christ dealings with the nation of Israel to accept him as their Messiah. And by the time that final seven years is done, 
Zechariah the prophet said they're going to look upon the one that they have pierced and they're going to say, where did you get those nail prints in your hands? And he's going to say, I got them in the house of my friends. And they're going to realize the whole nation of Israel at that time, the end of the final seven years, they're going to realize that 2,000 or more years before their Messiah came to them and they killed him and nailed him to a tree. So to, to, to look at that uh, final seven years, I, I want us to go back. And if you'll turn with me over there, I would really appreciate it. If you'll turn with me over there, it'll be good for you. We're going to go back to the book of Daniel chapter 9 and I think it would be good if we started at verse uh, let's start at verse 22 now this is a prophecy given to uh, Daniel I don't know seven or eight hundred years maybe more than that uh, before the the virgin birth of Jesus and Daniel's been seeking God, wanting to know uh, what is going to happen to his people, the Jewish people. And, uh, and so the angel comes and gives revelation to Daniel. This is some of the most amazing scripture found in the entire Bible. So I want you to, I want you to follow along with me. If you want to try to understand what's happening in Israel, this is important. So uh, let's look here. Daniel chapter 9, and let's begin reading in verse 22. The angel says to Daniel, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. Now when he says thy people, he's saying your people, the Jews. Seventy weeks. Now that's seventy weeks of years. It's not just seventy weeks. It's 70 weeks of years are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, that's Jerusalem. Now get this, to finish the transgression, the rebellion, the sinfulness of this world that's going on. Folks, this world is in open rebellion against God and his son, Jesus Christ. That's exactly what's happening, and uh, whether this is the time that's going to lead to the culmination of Armageddon, I don't know, or whether that's on down the road, what we're seeing is a, is a, is a little view of where the world is heading. There's going to be, the armies of the world are going to gather in the Middle East at Armageddon, and they're going to fight against Jesus Christ as he comes back to this earth. And this world is in rebellion. Now notice what the angel says. Seventy weeks, seventy weeks of years are determined upon the Jewish people and upon the holy city, that's Jerusalem, to finish the transgression, to put the rebellion down, and to make an end of sins. Do away with sins. And to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness. Now, now, folks, uh, Jesus Christ has already come and died on the cross, and he's already brought rec reconciliation for iniquity, and uh, he's brought cleansing for sin, but the Jewish nation as a whole have not accepted him as their Messiah, and so uh, the only way to bring an end to sins, bring in righteousness, get cleansing from sin is through Jesus Christ, and they've rejected him. So um, 70 weeks of years to bring uh, in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore, now, now get this, know therefore and understand. Now here, he's telling that you, you need to understand this. And you need to understand this. I need to understand this. This is important to us getting a, 
better handle on what's happening in this war that's going on in Israel. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Now, when this is going on, of course, Israel's in captivity in Babylon. And uh, there's going to be, Cyrus is going to make a decree. It's found in the book of Nehemiah. Uh, Cyrus, and they, we even know the exact date that that decree was given. From the time that that decree is issued, the, the angel says to Daniel, from the going forth of that decree until uh, Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks, the street shall be built again, the wall even in troublous times, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. So uh, Messiah is going to be cut off. Now that that tells us exactly how long that's going to be. And we know uh, we know that we know the date of the decree, uh, the actual date. Uh, the British Observatory, the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, United Kingdom, has. Uh, went back with computers and they have determined through knowing who the uh, the Roman Emperor is and knowing who the uh, ruler of Palestine is and so forth uh, they have they have come up with the fact that it was uh, it was uh, actually the date I've got written here somewhere April 6th, AD 32, Jesus rides into Jerusalem. They've, they've determined that it was actually exactly 173 Jewish calendar days, 173,880 days from that decree found in Nehemiah uh, exactly on the 173,880 day, Jesus Christ rode on the colt, the foal of an ass, rode down through the Kidron Valley into Jerusalem, presented himself as the Lamb of God, not the King of Kings, as the Lamb of God to die for the sins of the world that he was cut off. Exactly fulfilling scripture. Exactly 483 years uh, so you had, if you look at that scripture, 7 times 7 is 49 years, 62 times 7 is 434 years, which comes to 483 years, which is 173,880 days, exactly fulfilling this scripture right here. Now, quickly, for time's sake, let's, let's go on and read a few more verses here. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city that happened in 70 AD. And the sanctuary, the end therein, shall come with the flood. And under the end of the war, desolations are determined. So that happens in 70 AD. The Jewish people are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And there is no Israel until 1948 AD when miraculously the nation of Israel is reinstituted. And so that in itself is one of the greatest miracles we will ever see. So now look at, look at verse 27 because this is the verse we've been wanting to get to. Uh, what we just looked at is there's been 69 weeks of years fulfilled and Messiah's cut off. 69 weeks of years, Messiah's been cut off. That, if you go back and look at uh, verse 20, uh, 24, 
the, the angel said 70 weeks of years are determined upon your people. So 69 weeks of years, Messiah's cut off, and Israel is uh, destroyed and sent to the nations. And the time clock of God for the Jewish people is turned off. Now, when um, there's something's going to happen, there's still seven years. There's still seven years. Seventy weeks of years are determined upon the Jewish people. So there's still 70 years that God's going to deal with the Jewish people. So that 70, that last seven years, we also know in the Bible as the Great Tribulation, the Tribulation, Jacob's Troubles, known by many different names. Uh, Jesus said there's never been a time like it and never be a time like it again. The Bible actually says unless God would shorten that time a little bit, no flesh would actually be saved. No flesh would survive it. There's nuclear wars going to break out, folks. Uh, kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation. There's going to be famine, pestilence, earthquakes. The judgment seals of God, uh, bowls of wrath are going to be poured out on the earth. God's going to be dealing with the Jewish nation, trying to make them turn back to him. He's not willing that they should perish. Uh, the Bible says if God loves you, he'll spank you. Uh, he'll, he'll correct you as a, as a father would correct the son. Even us born-again Christians, we go out and get into sin. You might as well expect if you're a child of God, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna bring a rod of discipline. He's going to correct you, give you a little bit of a whipping, and bring you back into place. That's going to happen to the Jewish people. That's, that's part of what's shaping up right now in the Middle East. Now, look at verse 27. This is important. And he, now if you look at the entire chapter, you'll find out that he is speaking of the Antichrist. The Antichrist. And he, the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease uh, and for the overspreading of abominations. So notice what it says. He'll confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's one week of years. That's seven years. That starts the final seven years. So at some point, in all of this that's happening, whether uh, it's going to come from this war that's going on right now or whether it's a future war, the, the war is going to end with the covenant of peace. Now, if uh, let's just say, for instance, if what we see right now goes on, it escalates, it gets a little bigger, uh, you know, people are saying, wow, it could, this could be World War III because uh, China could get involved, Russia could get involved, Iran's going to get involved, uh, Hezbollah's going to get involved, the Houthis are going to get involved, all of them's coming against Israel. Uh, the United States hopefully would try to defend Israel, so they're going to get involved. Uh, it can be World War III and a bunch of these nations that's going to get involved are sitting on nuclear buttons. So where, where this could go, we don't know for sure. But it's very serious. Now at some point though, at some point, the thing is going to get uh, to a point where they're going to reach a peace process. Whether it's, whether it's going to come out of this one, whether it's going to brew into a bigger one, it's going to come. But that peace process, when that peace covenant is signed with many, it, it's the Antichrist that's involved in the signing. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. When that happens, when that happens, it Notice what it says. He'll confirm it for one week. That's, that's, that's not seven days. That's seven years. One week. Seven years. One week. That's going to complete the 70 weeks of years 
that we're seeing here. Okay, so let's go back over to Matthew chapter 24 because uh, when we got down here and he says all of these things are the beginning of sorrows and I've uh, I can see we're going to spend some time on this again next week because uh, all of these things are the beginning of sorrows. We're actually not into the signing of the, of the covenant. Uh, the Bible actually says that, I believe the Bible says that the church is holding back the revelation of the Antichrist. So we... Uh, I'm, myself and, and a lot of the mainstream church, we believe that there's an event that's going to occur before the start of these final seven years, before this peace accord is signed. There's going to be an event, that, an event that's going to happen. We, we refer to it in the Bible as the, the final, uh, as the rapture of the church. I'm sorry, I, I lost my thought for a moment as the rapture of the church, the catching away of the church out of the world uh, because God, the Bible says God's not appointed the church to wrath and uh, so the church is going to be removed and this peace accord will be signed and the final seven years begins. I want to tell you, uh, if you're watching this, you do not want to miss the rapture of the church to get out of here. Some people say, oh, that's just, that's escapism. That's not going to happen. The church is going to go through the tribulation period. No, they're not. The church is not going to go through the tribulation period. The church is going to be taken to be with the Lord. He, the church is the bride of Jesus Christ. He's not going to let them go through what's going to happen in this final seven years. The rapture is going to take place and we can be, it can happen today. It can happen Tomorrow, uh, no man knows the day or the hour. So, uh, you listen, if you have not asked Christ to forgive you of your sins and to come into your heart and save you, you need to do it. I mean, you, you need to stop putting it off. You need to stop saying, well, I want to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season because What's going to happen, the Bible says, that when it takes place, it's going to be in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ are going to be resurrected, and we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up to be in the clouds with the Lord forever. And the tribulation, the final seven years starts here. You don't want to be involved in that. Uh... We can already begin to see some of the uh, some of the, uh, the things that are going to happen. If you look at these rallies around the United States and all over the world, uh, pro-Palestinian rallies. Do you know what they're saying when they're rallying like that? They're saying they're just fine with the Israelis' babies being their heads cut off. They're just fine with mothers being raped and their bellies being cut open and babies being yanked out, um, whole families being killed, raped, women raped while the children and the dead watches. That's what has been going on. And all these Palestinians, these young people at the colleges, uh, they're, they're saying, oh, that's just fine with them. They're for the Palestinian cause. Well, they're against the Jews. Look at, look at what the scripture says. Look at verse 9 in, in Matthew 24. And then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. He's talking about the Jews. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's Jews and Christians.